Hi everyone! This is going to be a rather different video from my regular stuff. Recently, one of my YouTube buddies, History with Hilbert, uploaded a video about the traditional Dutch and Belgian character of Zwarte Piet that I disagreed with. So I wanted to make a quick response video to continue a dialogue of some sorts. We are both of Dutch descent, which is the reason for our focus on this topic. For those who are not familiar with the subject, I can recommend that you watch Hilbert's first video on it. Zwarte Piet or Black Piet is a traditional part of the Dutch and Belgian festival of Saint Nicholas or Sinterklaas, celebrated on the 5th of December. It is a rather jolly character and the Dutch-Belgian pendant to the elves of Santa Claus in North America or Nissa in Scandinavia, for example. Unfortunately, Zwarte Piet does show a striking resemblance to the so-called blackface character and other racist stereotypes that at one time were widespread in Western cultures. Now before you start thinking that the Netherlands and Belgium are these really racist societies, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, many Dutch and Belgians feel personally insulted by the suggestion that they are doing anything racist, even if it appears so to outsiders. Hilbert too argues that the tradition is not intrinsically racist. And knowing Hilbert personally, I am pretty sure he is no racist of any streak whatsoever. We have good contact with each other and he is a really nice and down-to-earth guy. Yet. A lot of the arguments in this video are surprisingly weak and uncharacteristically so, I must add. Hilbert has an impressive knowledge and insight in several historical topics. For those who do not know his channel, I urge you to check it out because it's really really good and the topics are usually researched and presented very well. Nevertheless, for this one video he seems to overlook countless of issues and his general treatment of the subject is rather naive, in my opinion. I'm wondering whether growing up in England he may not have followed the recent national debate as has been going on in the Netherlands for almost a decade now. The Dutch satirical news show Zondag met Lubach, which is basically a Dutch version of the Daily Show, has chimed in regularly on this topic. By the way, this is the same show that brought us the viral video of The Netherlands Welcomes Trump. Their latest take on the subject is brilliant, really humorous and I recommend you check it out. Just remember to turn on the captions so you can understand what is being said. Now of course it is entirely possible that Arjen Lubach or me are getting some things wrong here, which is why we should have this discussion in the first place. So let's take a closer look at it. So is Zwarte Piet a racist? Well wouldn't it be nice if we could give a simple answer to that question right off the bat. Not that there isn't a straight answer, but at the same time it's a complicated issue to unpack. One reason for this is because we are dealing with different people to whom the traditions mean different things. For many people who are fond of the character, a very important aspect is the intent. If the character is not intended to be racist in the minds of the people carrying the tradition forward, then in principle it cannot be deemed racist from their perspective. Another reason is that the question itself is poor. What we really should ask ourselves is, is the tradition of Zwarte Piet bad, as in morally bad, and whether something is morally bad depends on the real life effects it has on general well-being of human beings. Hilbert rather focuses on the supposed origin of the tradition to try and prove that it is actually not based on racism. But even that attempt has many issues that I would like to address, so here we go. On the 18th of November 2017, Sinterklaas, or Saint Nicholas, made his traditional entry into the Netherlands, this time arriving at Dokkum. Going to meet him, however, were two busloads of protesters, mainly from Randstad, so the area in North and South Holland that's most populated in the Netherlands, to protest the use of blackface. 
Now, Hilbert is not really making a point out of this himself here, but many defenders of Zwarte Piet in its current form often do argue the following. So protesters came in from the urbanized Randstad to the countryside of Friesland. So in other words, they're outsiders, implying that they're meddling. Now I don't understand why this is brought up, because it's irrelevant. Firstly, this is a national issue that affects people in the entire country. Secondly, the question that comes up is, how far do you want to retreat yourself to protect a certain opinion? Not that Hilbert is doing this himself, but it often happens in the general debate that people's opinions are being dismissed because of where they are from. The first line of defense is saying that the demands for reform came from people outside the country of the Netherlands, so in other words, they don't know what they're talking about. The next thing is that it is only immigrants that are trying to meddle with the tradition. This is actually rather discriminatory, because what they're saying is, people who are naturalized citizens have no say in matters going on in the country that they live in and which affect them, and by extension, their offspring, who are even born and raised in the country. And again, I'm not claiming that Hilbert says any of this himself. Okay, so now that the idea of reform is becoming more and more common among the Dutch people, the argument has shifted to them cosmopolitan city folks that come and meddle with local traditions still held in honor on the countryside. So, let me ask you, what is next? People from other neighborhoods, streets, houses? How far inwards must you retreat to defend your position by implying that some people's opinions are irrelevant just because of who they are and where they or just their parents are from. Historical Saint Nicholas was a bishop in Turkey who lived in the 3rd and 4th centuries AD. Needless to say, this is long before the Dutch involvement in the transatlantic slave trade, which was during the 17th and 18th centuries. So St. Nicholas himself definitely wasn't involved in the slave trade in that sense. Of that, we can be very sure. So this is the first explicit argument that Hilbert makes. And it is about how St. Nicholas predates Dutch slave trade, so therefore, Piet could not possibly be related to black African slaves. This is actually irrelevant. The festival of Saint Nicholas has been reinvented throughout the ages with the contemporaneous culture of each time period shaping it. The modern tradition is based on a book by Jan Schenkman from 1850, during a time when racism was very common and socially accepted still and the Dutch were actually even still holding slaves. This was also one of the first times a character like Zwarte Piet was recorded. There is no mention of him in any of the previous centuries. The stereotype of a person with sub-Saharan African looks popularized in the 19th century was exactly that. Completely black skin, large reddish lips, bulging eyes, wild hair, broken language, and clownish or foolish behavior. This motif recurs so many places, not in the least in the infamous American minstrel shows, and all the way up into many cartoons and animations of the early 20th century. This semblance is so straightforward that it is very obvious for people unfamiliar with Black Pete to see the association. Now, one of the reasons as well why Zwarte Piet is clearly not a slave is his attire. If you look at this, this does not look like someone who is out picking cotton at all. So the argument is that because Zwarte Piet does not wear rags or something humble, he cannot possibly re represent a slave. Now here are some pictures from the 17th century illustrating what was very popular at the time. Black African slaves dressed up in nice clothes. They may have had a better life than some of the other slaves, but they were basically treated as fancy lapdogs. Dutch historians like 
Eugenie Dirks Boer even suggest that it is likely that this motif from 17th century art has been used by a 19th century illustrator to flesh out the modern incarnation of Zwarte Piet. The fact St. Nicholas was a member of the church as well again decreases the likelihood that Zwarte Piet is indeed based on a slave figure that St. Nicholas himself owned, as the church was very much against slavery throughout most of its history. Well, I beg to differ. There are of course many examples to the contrary, but it is undeniable that Christianity historically has been used, or misused if you will, to justify slavery and even the genocide on indigenous peoples. If the children in the Dutch speaking areas, if they are naughty, then they threaten to take them back to Spain with them in the sack. And this might come back to the Barbary slave trade, which during a lot of large part of the Middle Ages and even the Age of Enlightenment, Lots of pirates uh, from North Africa, the Barbary states, raided Europe, including the Netherlands, and took slaves from there to North Africa and obviously sold them into bondage. And this is where this idea comes from. Well, that there would be a link between these two things is not only unproven, it also makes little sense. Many other mythological figures do the same thing, like the German Krampus, and even a version of St. Nicholas. Krampus may be related to Piet, but it has no semblance to Barbary Moors, which is the crux of Hilbert's argument. So this suggestion is rather far-fetched, unproven and also irrelevant. Now a very interesting one that I found out about was the connection between Sinterklaas and the Germanic god Odin or Vodun, depending on which tradition. Now they both have a lot of things in common as you can see and as I mentioned in my Sinterklaas video. And the Beaton are like the ravens in more senses than one, obviously the black from the ravens makes sense that the Beaton would then be black, linking back to this older tradition again. As interesting and compelling this idea may be, it is wholly unproven and also irrelevant. Like I said before, what is relevant is the time period where these figures have been reinvented and that time period just so happens to be steeped in racism and slavery. And again, it is important to note that there is no mention in any historical records of a figure like Zwarte Piet until the 19th century, so that also weakens the link between the ravens and the Piton. To see what was going on. So black as suit, that's because obviously the suit from later on you had chimneys. If they'd been going down the chimney, then they would be all sooty, which would explain why their faces are black, because chimney sweeps back in the day also would have blackened faces from all the soot, uh, just as you would if you went down to deliver presents. This is also unproven and irrelevant as well, for the same reasons as I stated before. When Zwarte Piet was reinvented or introduced, it was clearly modeled after a black African slave figure. Modern Zwarte Piet does not only have skin black as suit, but also the exact same other stereotypical characteristics that were a very popular way to depict black Africans in the 19th and early 20th century. Zwarte Piet did have this kind of caricature, a, a little like Jim Crow in a sense of being this kind of the clumsy uh, yet happy um, black man who was not very intelligent and was always doing everything wrong, that kind of thing. And I think it's a good thing that we have moved on as a society from portraying the kind of dumb yet happy stereotypical black man um, whereas now they the Zwarte Bieten are seen more as yes they are comedic but they are also very friendly um, which I think is a positive thing. Well first of all a presumed positive stereotype is still a stereotype. Also Hilbert contradicts himself now. First he tries to disassociate the Zwarte Piet from black Africans, but now he does the exact opposite and deems them goodwill ambassadors of black people, quote unquote. And let's not forget that the jolly nature of the character always has leaned towards the clownish. 
our children to learn that black people are like clowns? But it is true that young children don't associate Zwarte Piet with black people, but more with clowns. That is fair enough, and I myself can attest to that as growing up with Zwarte Piet. Zwarte Piet is such an exaggerated blackface figure that its relation to actual black people is not obvious at all. So for children yet unaware of these stereotypes, Zwarte Piet looks nothing like black people. So they simply don't connect the two. However, far too many adults do. And these adults often add insult to injury by, for example, giving the character many typical attributes of the stereotype, like a phony accent and clumsy and dumb behavior, all of which is based on the 19th century typecasting of this character. Oh, well, well, heel koud. Heel koud op de boot, ja, hier naar Nederland. En lange tocht. Hele lange tocht. Maar wel alle zwarte pieten meegenomen. Alleen zwarte pieten. In fact, in Dutch, the term Zwarte Piet is regularly used as a slur for people with sub-Saharan African looks. And that is the core of the issue, isn't it? As someone growing up with the tradition, I fully acknowledge that, generally speaking, racism is not in the minds of the Dutch or Belgian people who celebrate the tradition as it is. And this is underlined very strongly by the traditions also being celebrated in former Dutch colonies like Aruba and Curaçao, whose societies are majority Afro-Caribbean. Yes, you've got black people putting on blackface and not making any connection. There are even polls that indicate that many black Dutch citizens do not see the tradition as necessarily racist. But we cannot ignore three things. Firstly, the roots of the modern form of the character in 19th century stereotypes. Secondly, how the character currently attracts racism, both casually and explicitly. And most importantly, how it affects people of color. This is Gerda Havertong, a Dutch actor of Surinamese descent and, in the 80s, regular cast member of the Dutch version of Sesame Street. As early as 1987, she talked in the show about how people should stop calling people like her Zwarte Piet, because it's just disrespectful. Kijk eens naar me. Ja? Lijk ik op Zwarte Piet? Ik ben helemaal geen Zwarte Piet. Ik lijk er geen eens op. Het is elk jaar weer hetzelfde liedje, hè? Sinterklaas is nog niet eens in het land. Of zwarte mensen, grote mensen en kinderen worden voor Zwarte Piet uitgescholden. Maar Gerda, het is toch hartstikke leuk om Zwarte Piet te zijn? Ja, dan, dan mag je met de zak lopen en pepernoten strooien. Oh nee, you know, het is helemaal niet leuk. Ik heet Gerda ook als het Sinterklaasfeest is. Now one could argue that just because some people are offended, that doesn't mean that we should simply give in. That principle can be true in cases where one wants to criticize certain religious traditions, for example, without having to suffer the repercussions of being silenced or even threatened with violence. In the case of Zwarte Piet, I would argue that the reverse is the case. It is people who are offended by the suggestion that they're doing something racist and who fear having to let go of a beloved childhood memory that are lashing out here. A Hitler meme video out there attempting to highlight the irrational response, hypocrisy and even blatant racism of many Zwarte Piet defenders ironically receives a lot of comments endorsing its assumed message, despite the fact that it's a satire. You've got many Dutch celebrities like TV presenters Umberto Tan and Silvana Simons, as well as rock star Anouk, who are now receiving death threats for going against the opinion of the defenders of Zwarte Piet. And what about the tale of this lady who showed up at a rally protesting the UN investigation of Zwarte Piet a few years ago? She actually agreed with the protesters that the UN has better things to worry about. 
She herself stems from Western Papua New Guinea that has been occupied by Indonesia since the 60s. So she was protesting that the UN wasn't looking into that issue instead. Despite of that, she was assaulted by a mob, assuming she was a counter-protester, merely because of the way that she looked. Of course, you've also got protesters against Zwarte Piet, becoming increasingly violent and wanting to rally at venues where many children are present. That also isn't a good thing. Clearly, this is spinning out of control. So to return to the question of whether the Zwarte Piet tradition in its current form is a bad thing, even if no longer meant in a racist way, we should take a step back and look at the big picture. Clearly, it is both hurtful and it also brings out the worst in some people, so I would say that it is bad enough to go through some kind of reform. As an example of how we perhaps ought to do it, I'd like to mention an older Dutch cartoon called Shors and Shimi, featuring a pair of adventurous kids. In its original form in the 50s, it featured a racially stereotypical depiction of Shimi. When the cartoon was rebooted late 60s and mid 70s, this character was changed a couple of times to look just like a regular black kid. By the way, they also made live action movies which went from this to this in a matter of years. Yes, they went from actual blackface to normal person from one year to the other. Despite this being a children's cartoon, no one protested about it back then and during the 80s it became one of the most popular cartoons in the Netherlands. So clearly it is possible to compromise for everyone's sake.